been waiting on some electrical components to be able to wire up the electric cooling fan in the proper way for it to work. So it's pretty much, I'm retarded. I don't understand the wiring or the electrical stuff. I've been schmoozing over it because I'm a jackass. Uh, but Dad knows it really well and I, I need to understand <laughs> how it works. Uh, so this video is like partially in case you're wanting to wire up a, a two-speed electric fan to your old car so you can kind of see what we did and he can explain how it works. And the other purpose of this video is so that whenever something goes wrong later on down the road if he's not around uh, I can have some kind of reference for knowing what the hell's going on because I'm stupid. I don't understand it. It just goes right over my head. So it makes sense when he explains it, and then I sleep, and then it's out of my head. So this video, maybe it'll be helpful if you want to wire up a dual-speed electric fan to your classic automobile. Um, hopefully it is. It's so cool. But it's also going to be there so that whenever I have to try to understand it, I can just look at this video and be like, oh yeah, that's, that's how that shit works. So it might be a little technical or weird, not like a regular video that we have, but uh, it explains something that needs to be explained just as much for my own reference as it is for any usefulness it might have for somebody else. Well, that's what we're doing, and I'll let him take it and explain away. So before we start, I'd just like to point out that we have a really bitchin' uh, little LED setup now. You can see the, uh, if you turn the headlights on, and then the high beam, that's my high beam indicator light and then turn signals, left turn signal, right turn signal, and uh, that's the uh, brake light up there which hopefully I never see and the tack mounted here on the steering column. Okay, so this is your line voltage. You've got a line voltage and a control voltage. So you've got two different things here. You've got your line voltage, which actually runs your fan, sends the power to your fan, and then you have what's called your control voltage, basically what turns them on and off. So your line voltage, right off of your battery, right off of your hot side of your battery, goes to a 50 amp fuse, comes down here, goes in here, and feeds pole number 30 on this one, right? But also, you can see right here where it's tied in, goes down and feeds 30 on this one. So basically, this wire is hot all the time to pole number 30 and to pole number 30. Whenever these relays close, closes this right here, which feeds it the rest of the way through, pole number 87, this one goes down and kicks on your high speed. This one, whenever it closes, goes over, down and kicks on your low speed. Now what I'm going to do, something he didn't do here, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a diode in right here and right here. Because that's what that's going to do is whenever this fan, when these relays open and it kills the power to them, these fans, what they'll do is they kind of work like a generator and they make their own energy. What that'll do is that'll cause a snap action inside this relay and you'll prematurely burn your relay out. So what the diode does is whenever this opens up, it takes this extra energy that the fan is making on its own and it sends it to the ground and dissipates it. So it doesn't dissipate it inside the relay, it dissipates it out here on the ground, which extends the life of the relay. If you don't do that, then this relay is not gonna last very long, you're gonna be changing it a lot. What this does, this is your control wiring. Right here, this is what's gonna make your relays open and close. We're using uh, what's called a, a ground switch device, which means our sensor, what it does is it opens and closes the ground, not the hot. So I'm gonna come off of a 12 volt whenever the key's turned on, it automatically sends 12 volts to, the, to here. I'm gonna run that through a five amp fuse. I'm gonna tie it in right here, and it's also gonna go to right here. Okay, this one is called a switching relay. These are just, we're using the same relays on all of them. I'm just not gonna use the 87A on them because this is a switching relay. What this does is it sends power to here all the time, sends power to here all the time. But 85 to 87A, it also sends power up to there, so it's also sending power down to here. So you're gonna have power here, here, and here all the time when the key's on. What's gonna make these relays close, see this is a coil inside here. This is 12 volt coil. When this 12 volt coil gets energized, that's what closes these circuits. So what you want is, like, let's use this one for an example. When it goes to right here, this is hot all the time. This relay's not gonna close until the ground is made. So what's gonna make the ground on this one? This is a switching relay, okay? So the way a switching relay works is there's power here all the time, there's power all here all the time, there's power here all the time. Whenever this thing is energized, this one will close, but this one will open. So right now, with nothing going, you would have power here, here, and right here. 
This is a closed circuit coming down to here. So this is the switching relay. Right. This is the high speed, this is the low speed. This is the high speed. This so this is switches the... back and forth between this. No. What this one does is follow this wire right here. It goes over to here. This is your sensor. It screws into our thermostat housing. This sensor, we got 180 degree thermostat. Well, you can't put in a sensor that's going to kick on at 180 degrees or it's going to cycle your thermostat open and closed and open and closed and open and closed constantly all the time. So what I'm doing is, and your thermostats usually don't close at exactly 180, they'll close at like 185 or something like that. I mean, open, open, close, whatever. So what I did is I went with a, a, a sensor. My sensor, usually they say 10 degrees over whatever you want it to do it at, but since the thermostat's gonna, it's not gonna be exactly 180, and so what I did is I ordered a 195, 170. So at 195, this thing's gonna kick on. In cooler weather, whenever it's, you know, your thermostat's kind of operated, it might not even kick the fan on, it might just run a steady 180, but the worst case scenario, it's gonna get up to 195. This is gonna kick on. This, this is gonna close, it's gonna close the ground. As soon as it closes the ground right here, since this is all automatically got, it's hot all the way down to here, it's the hot's already there. This closes the ground, it closes this circuit right here, which if you see right here, there's your main power feed, it goes through, kicks on your low speed fan. And the only way right. for high speed to come on no, is no, no, the no. switch. Right, and now when you energize your switch that we've mounted on the dash, see I've already got your switch mounted and I've already got grounded up underneath the dash. And this is the switch where we have it mounted for me controlling the high speed. I just flip this toggle switch up and turn it on. That's my Mad Max supercharger switch actually is what it is. When the switch closes, it closes the ground to this right here, which since we've already got power here, switches this, okay? Say this is running and low, say it's running in low speed right now and you want to kick it into high speed. As soon as you close this ground, the switching relay, this is going to open up and this is going to close again. On, on typical operation, when you're using your sensor to turn your fan on and off, since this has power to here, to here, and it goes up and backs down, here so this is energized this is energized and this is energized all the time as soon as this closes the ground it closes this so this relay is basically sitting here idle it's not closed okay because all this path is going through here down to here ground comes in here closes this relay sends power through here turns on your low speed and that's when this sensor has told it hey i'm hot this sensor turn tells it okay it's reached 195 i'm gonna turn the fan on this is going to close the ground. It's going to send the ground to here. The hot's already there. That's going to close this relay. It's going to send your voltage from your battery straight through the relay, straight down to your low speed. All right. Okay. Then say for some reason it's not keeping up. It's hot out. I'm in traffic. It's 105 whatever. degrees out or whatever. You want to kick it into high speed, right? You flip your switch on your dash. That closes this circuit which as soon as this circuit's closed, because remember the power is already there, and the power is already there, as soon as this closes the circuit, since this is a switching relay, this closes, but this opens, so it kills the power to this one. So it kills the power to your low speed. So that closes, it allows this voltage to go through here, come down to here, and energize this one. Which is the high speed relay. Which is your high speed relay. And it's already, and it's just grounded to a, to a chassis ground over here. So you're actually, this one right here, you're actually breaking the hot, not the co not the negative. You've already got your main power feed through here, comes through here, down, and it engages the high speed fan. See and that way you're not that, <laughs> engages the high speed. <laughs> en engages, engages the high speed of your fan but you're not sending power to your low and your high at the same time. That's why you use a switching relay, because it kills the circuit, even if, even if this is telling it to run in low speed, by doing it through a switching relay with your switch, you're actually bypassing your automatic low speed and running it on high speed. And as soon as you shut your switch off, if this is still closed, it's just gonna go right back to your low speed. So let me dummy this down completely, all right? You got a low speed relay and a high speed relay. Right. Low speed relay gets its shit from the temperature, from the sensor. temperature sensor. The high speed relay is controlled by the toggle switch on the dash. Right. The third relay flip flops between these two based on all your crazy wiring right. that this tells one, it where to go. The switching relay 
allows it to use this one or this one, but not at the same time. Okay, so you All get right. information from the engine temperature for this one, information from my switch for this one, and then this one routes all of that Back and forth. between. Right. So this one, this is what tells it which to listen to based on whatever else is going on. Right. So these are the relays. Yeah, They're going to get wired up and put into this box and then you're going to do the diodes to these It'll and it's all going to be contained in this box. Right. This is my, this is my switching relay. Of course, I've just got started on it. I'm not finished. I'm gonna mount all these right inside here. This is this the inline is my, fuse. This is my inline five amp fuse. And then I'm gonna mount this. I'm gonna mount these. And then I'm gonna mount this on your firewall or your finger well, inner fender somewhere. I have some wires coming out, and everything will be controlled inside there sensor I'm going to use. Now they make two different types. They make this type as a single post. This is the one that's got the uh, using a ground switch. They make the kind that has the two different legs up which actually interrupts your your line voltage instead of your ground. Ours breaks the ground. Yeah. Uh, some You can actually hook it up to where it actually switches on the hot leg either way. But I couldn't find the sensor I wanted and the one that switched to hot, so I decided to go with this one which switches to ground, which is pretty common in automotive anyway. Which is SPU1X195T. Okay, so one last question. Let's make this as clear as mud. These relays. <laughs> I've got AZ979-1C-12DE. Which isn't what we wanted, right? Well, what, these are all three switching relays. Okay, and the only difference in a switching relay, of this particular brand anyway, the switching relay and the regular relay, is this extra post right here, the 87A. So, but they were back ordered and we couldn't get them. So I don't care about that. I'll, they were the same price. So I'll just put them all in. And this particular one is the only one I will use the 87A pin on.